Choosing your niche is probably the hardest decision you have to make as a new start agency owner. But today I'm gonna to help you make that decision by ranking 100 agency niches in just four tiers. Starting with avoid, this is pretty obvious. Don't go for these, it's probably not gonna work. Easy, these are suitable for beginners, even if you've got no sales or marketing experience. Medium, this is where it gets a little bit trickier. So if you're up for a challenge, you can go for one of these. And then hard, these are only for existing agency owners. Do not try and go for one of these if you haven't got any experience, you're gonna fail. And I wanna highlight that as we go up this tier list, typically there is more profit and more upside to be had. But don't let that tempt you going for a hard niche if you're only just starting out. You can start off with an easy or a medium niche if you fancy yourself a bit of a challenge and you can always then graduate to one of these hard niches and switch later down the line when you have experience. Do not try to run before you can walk. So let's get stuck into this list. So first of all, we have kitchen and bathroom renovators, okay? It's fitting because we just did that in the Renault Reach series. Loads of people have been copying that niche at the moment. I would say this is, do you know what? I was gonna say this is an easy niche, but I'm actually gonna put it in the medium category right now, purely because the series Renault Reach had so much exposure online. We started an agency from scratch, signed up first client in just four days, then signed up another one a week later. Loads of people have now copied that niche. I'm putting it in the medium, ca medium category because it's gonna have some temporary saturation. Down the line, it will drop back down to be an easy niche. Okay, e-commerce, this is hard. Do not try and do this if you're a new start agency owner. E-commerce brand owners are tech savvy business owners. They are not gonna work with some person that's never ran out before, that doesn't have any marketing experience. They're not gonna work with you, okay? You need to earn your stripes. Do not try and work with e-com brands unless you are an existing agency owner with existing case studies and you know what you are doing. Restaurants. Okay, I'm actually gonna say avoid to restaurants. Five years ago, restaurants were great. My first client was a restaurant. They're too low ticket now. Ads don't work in the same way they used to. It just doesn't really work. Uh, cafes, avoid, again, too low ticket. Anything that's really low ticket where the average value of a customer is under $20 on the front end, don't go for them. Ideally, it wants to be uh, more than that, like $30, $40, $50 price per customer as a minimum. This is if you're running Facebook ads. I'm broadly speaking at all niches here, uh, but I'm really talking about a basic paid ad service where we're generating leads for a business in order to help them increase their overall sales, okay? But this does apply to any other agency as well, as long as you're in some kind of a revenue-driven agency, you're trying to make your clients money. Drink venues, drink venues, uh, cocktail bars, pubs, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm gonna say avoid, it's just not gonna work. The too low ticket, again, alcohol stores. I'm gonna call this hard. You can get some really good results for alcohol businesses. I've worked with gym brands myself, a gin, not gym, uh, and a rum company as well. And both had really great return on investment. We spent hundreds of thousands on ads for them, worked well, but it does take uh, somebody with that experience and they're generally gonna be e-commerce. You don't wanna be doing no face-to-face uh, -face alcohol store. Food delivery, uh, I'm gonna say avoid unless it's high ticket. So the caveat to restaurants and food delivery and cafes, if this is high ticket, okay, and by high ticket, I mean the average spend per head is like 50 pounds, $50 plus, then sure, you can work with these guys. I'm gonna say avoid as a blanket statement because only like 10% of restaurants are actually at that kind of tier level, that, that, that price level. And by the way, guys, why should you listen to me? I own a seven-figure agency. If you haven't watched my videos before, I've coached thousands of other agency owners on how to launch agencies of their own. I've worked with tens and tens of different niches in my own agency, and I've helped other people literally work with every single niche that we have on screen today. So I know what I'm talking about. I've seen this, and I've been around the bush for about five years now uh, in, the, in the agency industry. So trust me when I say this, don't deviate from this list. If you want success, follow the protocols I'm gonna go through in this video today. And I am gonna to have to talk fast because yeah, we don't want this to be like two hour long video. Financial advisors, financial advisors. Uh, I would say that this is a medium difficulty niche. Uh, it's a good niche. Uh, you can get, you can run some really good lead generation ads on Facebook for financial advisors, get them some good success. Same again for Google ads. Just a little bit hard to get hold of. Uh, accountants, again, medium. These kind of a business, it's quite hard to get hold of the actual business owner in these niches. So you're gonna to speak to a lot of gatekeepers, okay? That's fine when you get better at cold calling, you're gonna get hold of them, uh, but they are generally good niches. Car dealerships, okay? Car dealerships, again, this is a medium niche. Okay, car dealerships are not lead generation businesses, okay? You do not impulse buy a car, you go and actively search for it. And so when you're working with a car dealership, it needs to be brand awareness and creative. Car garages. Uh, this is, ooh, car garages. I don't know, like I'm gonna call this an avoid. Car garages, you only need them when you need them, okay? It's like very rare that you're gonna again do some kind of impulse buy. Um, but 
Uh, I'm, I'm, let's, let's just say well, look, you would avoid car garages if this was on the repair side. If this was on like wraps and car parts, etc., then great. Okay, so I'm going to call it easy, but on the caveat that this is not repairs, even though this image there is repairs, I want this to be like car wraps and so on. Okay, which kind of comes under this category as well, which is car detailing. Okay, so car detailing is good. Someone comes and washes cars, high tickets, not low ticket. Um, and this is going to be like car wraps, car parts, etc. Good niches, just not car repair. Uh, vehicle hire, cool. This is going to be medium. Again, it's not just going to be a conventional lead generation service. Yeah, this is going to be uh, probably Google and creative. Online courses, hard. Uh, loads of people think they want to work with online courses because there's an abundance of coaches around. The problem with the online course industry is most coaches don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. And so when you you as an agency start working with them, you realize that very early on. And I'm saying this from experience. I've worked with online coaches and consultants in the past. Your ads and your service that you're going to provide as an agency is like 10% of their success. There are so many other variables involved. You can build a very successful agency in the online course industry, extremely successful, but just know that you're going to be working on webinars. You're going to be building out VSLs. You're going to be getting involved in a lot more than you're going to want to get involved in as a new start agency owner. So bear that in mind. Childcare, uh, nannies, uh, and so on. Uh, childcare, that's a good one. I'm going to call that an easy one. Uh, that's a, that's going to be an easy niche because you'll be able to get hold of a business owner very easy. My thought process is you're not going to be able to, you're going to have to avoid one man bands. They're going to be very low ticket. So um, I would be going for the people that have at least, uh, there's two of them plus. Okay. So get rid of the small guys. Electronics, which is gaming equipment, TVs, and computers. Uh, this is hard because this is really fall under e-commerce because you're not going to be doing any local brick and mortar, uh, but those kind of businesses will do really well. Sports coaching, martial arts, golf lessons, etc. This is an easy one. Uh, this is a great niche for beginners. So martial arts especially, uh, and that is kind of all martial arts. Uh, but we also kind of got golf lessons. We've got uh, personal trainers, etc. Fall under that category. Uh, we've got another one here, which is fitness coaching, which kind of is the same thing. But I've got listed here yoga, dance, pilates, aerobics, etc. All of these kind of health and fitness professionals are really great niches uh, for beginners. Music artists, music artists, band bookings, DJs, etc. I'm going to call this one an avoid. I'm going to call this one an avoid. Unless it's like a child's DJ. If this is like a kid's DJ, like a birthday DJ, um, then I'm going to call it a void. If it's like a birthday DJ, then cool. Like I'd probably put this under the easy category. But generally speaking, bands, etc. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard to like get these guys lots of bookings on social media because like people, again, are going to be looking for these kind of individuals when they need them. The reason why I say that, um, so you might be able to run Google ads for them. But the reason why I say birthdays is because children's birthdays are in an abundance. It's very easy to target those audiences on Facebook. Makeup artists. Makeup artists, easy, great. Uh, but again, it wants to be high-end makeup artists. Hair salons, easy, good niche. Again, high-end hair salons do, and not men's barbers. Men's barbers are too low ticket. It needs to be like hair coloring and things like that. Okay, so all the stuff that's going to cost you like 150 pounds, 100 pounds plus um, for, for a service. And there's a good lifetime value there, which is uh, the amount of money somebody will spend with that hair salon over the course of their lifetime. If we like the service we've been provided in a salon, typically we're going to go back to it. Travel agents. Okay, travel agents. Uh, I'm going to... Oof. Travel agents. I've not really seen anyone know us in travel agents, but I actually am going to call this a hard niche. I actually think there's a lot of opportunity in travel agents. Uh, the reason why uh, is, uh, and it would be a very specific kind of travel agent and as one that's got really great content. So kind of like, uh, a boutique travel agent, I would say. Not like your, your kind of big high street uh, franchise type travel agent. But again, this will be hard to pull this off properly because you're going to need to do content and so on for these companies if they don't already have it. Fashion slash clothing stores, Awesome, great niche, but again, hard. Okay, these kind of companies, they know they need to run ads, they know exactly what they need to do, and they've probably worked with agencies before, so you need to be a good agency to stand out to work with these guys and actually do a good job. There's an abundance of startup clothing brands around. Do not work with them. Do not ever fall into the trap of working with a startup e-commerce company. I cannot count how many new start agency owners come to me and like, oh, Jordan, yeah, I've just started working with this e-com brand. I'm like, cool, how much revenue are they making? Oh, they're just starting out. That company is not going to make money for like three, four, five months after starting that company. And they're going to have to have budget to spend thousands on ads before they get proof of concept. So many people watch YouTube video, think they can start an e-com brand. They're going to be a millionaire in the next couple of months 
much. They spend all their money on their product and they budget nothing for advertising. Whereas the advertising is the thing they need to spend the most on. So they fall fat on that, flat on their ass. Okay, so don't get roped into a new start econ brand. It's going to give you headaches. It's going to make you question your own ability to deliver a service when the problem isn't actually you, it's the client. And actually it is your problem because you shouldn't have fucking worked with a startup brand in the first place. But you heard it here. Okay, don't do it. Hotels. Hotels, I'm going to put this in the hard category, kind of falls under the same thing as the travel agent. SaaS software, hard, but if you nail it down, you actually build an agency that works with SaaS companies, you can do an amazing job. Uh, this is different to the go high level SaaS that people have been promoting on YouTube. You all know my opinion on that. If you don't, check out my channel and watch my other videos. But uh, I'm talking about working with other software companies that provide solutions to, uh, to, to businesses, okay? Can be really great clients, but you're gonna need experience. Wedding planners. You know, I'm actually gonna say, oh, wedding planners, this isn't wedding photographers. Wedding planners. Mm, medium difficulty. It can be good when you get it right, but generally speaking, wedding planners are small companies and they don't have uh, the desire to grow an awful lot and they also are then limited by the amount of people they can work with at one time. So I'm gonna call it medium because there are there is a subsection of that market that will be big enough and will want to expand and I think that you could nail it pretty well for them by running ads to people that are recently engaged on Facebook, uh, but it's gonna take a very... Um, yeah, it's gonna, you're gonna have to be quite patient on finding those people. Event venues, entertainment, music, weddings, etc. Oh, venues, uh, medium difficulty. Uh, that's gonna be, uh, no, I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this hard. Event venues, it can be good. I've worked with event venues myself, uh, but you need to get involved in their kind of overall marketing strategy. It's not just a simple lead gem. Uh, online tutor slash coaching, let's put that right back of online courses, exactly the same, it's hard. Residential slash commercial construction. Construction, I'm going to call this an easy niche. It's a great niche to go for. Um, everybody needs a little bit of work in their house, whether they want to do it or not, or can afford to do it or not. Everybody's got something that they want to get done in their house. So construction companies are really good, and they're just not utilizing lead gen ads as much as they should. Solar, easy, great niche. Again, falls in the same category. Roofers, great niche, kind of all laborers, everybody in kind of like that manual labor, is, they're, they're really great niches to go for. Um, so yeah, roofers, we have bricklayers, same thing. Um, HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, okay, especially actually in the UK at this time of year. If you get on it quick, these are great companies to go for because everybody's just been through the hot summer. They're thinking, oh, I'm not going through another year next year with no, no air con. Uh, and so HVAC companies will clean up at the moment. Landscapers, again, great. Uh, decks and fences, great. So any of these, any of these jobs, anyone kind of in the home improvement kind of uh, service provider based niches, these are generally really, really good niches to go for, uh, especially as a beginner, because you're going to be able to call up these guys They're not going to be particularly tech savvy. Running Facebook ads and lead generation ads, for example, is going to be like a new opportunity for them, even if they've heard about it before. Um, and generally speaking, the strategy is very, very simple. A nice image ad showing before and after of their work. You're running an ad to the local area. It's local marketing. You're getting leads in for $20. Uh, they're cleaning up. It's a really easy relationship and it's a nice break into the, uh, the industry of starting an agency. Okay, You're going to get your confidence, get your case studies, use that and leverage it to get these other clients. Tree surgeons, good one. I'm yet to see someone absolutely nail it in this niche because people aren't really thinking of these. Hopefully I'm giving you some ideas for other niches now, but tree, sur tree surgeons is a great one. Towing companies. Towing, I'm going to say avoid on that. It's one of those, if you, if, when, when you need it, you go and get it. If you're a Google agency, cool. This I would put this under easy, but for the majority of you, you're going to be like running Facebook ads. Uh, I would say avoid. Window cleaning. Pretty easy. Um, good lifetime value. Uh, you're probably going to want to sell people in on a package of some sort, like a three month package, because it ultimately depends on how much the window cleaning is. Uh, you're not just going to want to be doing $15 jobs. Okay. So the caveat to this is uh, they need to be uh, relatively like like a high end service and it needs to be good jobs. You're probably going to get a lot of qu low quality leads in to be able to then filter through and pick out the good ones. Pressure washing, same thing. Painting and decorators, same thing. Avoid the one-man bands here. Domestic cleaning, home and business. Yeah, 
cool. Uh, but again, we're aiming for the lifetime value. What we're not trying to do is run ads to get someone in to clean their house once for 30 quid and be done with it. We're looking for people that want repeat business. So commercial cleaning, house cleaning, but then on some kind of a monthly retainer, that's what we kind of want to be working on here, those kind of companies. And if they're not already doing that, we talk to them about that, talk to them and educate them on lifetime value and then help them build an offer around it. Junk removal, again, same. Handymen, uh, I'm gonna call that, oh, handyman. I'm gonna call it a handyman. I'm gonna call it, ah, handyman's gonna be a void. If you're a one-man band handyman and you're doing like odd jobs for people, like you're gonna be doing a hundred pound job one day, next day it's gonna be like 10 pound to like clear someone's bin out for them. Uh, and also if you're a handyman then and you've actually established a business and you haven't yet found this one path that you're gonna be going down, then like, yeah, you're just not gonna, you're gonna be a small coin business owner. There's no point. Like the handymen that then found a craft ended up being one of these guys. They own a construction company or a roofing company or solo or or bricks or, or landscaping or something. They actually found their craft. But if you're just a general handyman doing odd jobs here and there, they're probably gonna be too low ticket and there's no point. You're not gonna be worth earning more than five grand a month. Um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. If any of you are any worked with any handymen and you've smashed it forward and please tell me and if you disagree with anything i'm going through in this video by the way like starting the conversation in the comments tell me tell me why i'm wrong tell me when you think I, I shouldn't have put wedding planners in medium and it should be easy whatever okay uh let me know let's get a conversation going floras floras is that a job is that a technical term floras people that place flooring uh well obviously flooring companies again easy uh plumbing companies again good uh, electricians, good. But again, these need to be larger companies, not just kind of one-man band, small companies. A skip higher. Uh, I'm going to say... I'm going to say easy. And I want to see somebody do this. I, I, I'm yet to see... I've, I've been telling people before, do skip higher. I think skip higher would be a really interesting niche to try out. Uh, so I want to see someone do this. One of you go and do it in your local area, call up some skip companies, build, get some meetings, run some ads, then comment under this video and tell me how you get on. I think it would actually be a good niche. Something tells me in my gut. Um, shed suppliers. Okay, so you're, you're building sheds. Um, I'm going to call this medium. Okay, it sounds like a little bit more high ticket, but I think that would be a really good one. It's typically probably going to be like an e-commerce element there or some kind of a hybrid at least, but I think that would be good. Outbuildings in general, those kind of home offices in the garden, you know, put pop-up home offices that people have. Awesome uh, businesses to work with. Great return on investment, but it's a little bit harder to work with those guys. Mortgages. Let's call this medium. Um, lawyers, I'm going to call this one hard, just purely because these are very professional business owners. It's not going to be that easy for you to uh, to speak to these individuals if you've got no business experience and you don't have the confidence. Um, but yeah, really great niche. I've seen a lot of people smash it there. Funeral services. Uh, let's avoid that one. I, I, I don't know. I'm... Yeah, let's avoid that. I don't think that... I can't imagine it'll be a very fun niche to work with. Uh, I can't imagine them wanting to spend a lot of money on ads. It's a bit morbid. Yeah, <laughs> let's avoid funeral services. One of you nut jobs will go out there and do it and make 100 grand a month from funeral service agency. I can't wait to see it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that one on the avoid list. Senior care. Uh, let's go medium because I think the strategy is going to need a, a bit more thought than just a casual lead gen, but I think senior care will work really well. Gyms is... Okay, gyms I'm going to put under the easy category, but just bear in mind that if you've if you've unfortunately in an area that has been absolutely nailed, okay, in advertising agencies and gyms, uh, gyms are just like them, one of those bread and butter niches that so many people have tried to go for. Uh, but when you get them, they're very easy to get results for, which is why I'm still going to put them uh, on the list uh, in the easy category. And, and that is kind of bodybuilding gyms. It also is still martial art gyms, as we covered earlier. Think about the out of the box, CrossFit, climbing, don't just think about your, your regular pure gym, 24-hour gym down the road everybody's going to. Think outside of the box of these. Boot camps. Oh, that's funny. I just said that. Let's call that easy as well. Personal trainers, same thing. Um, supplement companies, hard, but the return on investment is massive for those companies. I work with a couple supplement brands at the minute, and it's just wild. They're, they're doing ridiculous days. Like, yeah, million a month. Chiropractors, easy if they haven't been here. Hard, look at that. That solar head. Um, yeah, if they haven't been hit hard, then chiropractors can be good. Uh, it can be a really good niche, actually. Uh, race tracks, driving experiences, go-karting, etc. Ooh, 
that's one I haven't considered before. Racetracks, driving experiences, and so on. Uh, I'm going to call this a medium niche I, because I want someone to try it out and get proof of concept there. But I think that could be, I think that could be really, ah, it's not expensive enough. Scrap go-karting, that's not going to work. Driving experience is one where you pay like 100 plus to go like actually do an experience. I'm going to call that medium. Like I think I can see a lot of people booking that from an ad, like for sure. Cosmetic surgeons, medium but great niche, okay? Being hit quite heavy by people. When you work with them, you can get great results for them and they're generally quite loyal clients. Cosmetic dentists, exactly the same. Hard to get hold of a business owner. Great when you actually sign them up. Worked with a few myself. Hair transplants, again, that they're pretty hard, worked well myself, smashed it forward and return on investment was wild, but they are uh, more experienced business owners. Uh, they're going to want a bit of proof of concept from you guys. You're always going to want to, with these guys, you want to offer an appointment setting service. Dog trainers. Now, over 50% of people have dogs. I'm pretty sure that's the stat unless I just made it up. Lots of those dogs need training. And so, yeah, I think that'd be a really good niche for people. Med spas, again, same thing. So kind of medical spas, Botox, fillers, etc. Not always the same as aesthetic. Sometimes there's other treatments, red light therapy and so on. Uh, you can think uh, red light therapy, uh, chirotherapy, which is ice therapy, etc. So a bunch of different alternative therapies that med spas will work on. Real estate agents, medium. A lot of beginners go for real estate agents, but you're literally selling to experienced salespeople. And so it's not a, it's not a beginner friendly niche, but again, you can smash it there. Event planners, uh, so like wedding planners and so on. Um, we've already got wedding planners, but I'm going to put event planners in here as well. So it's like birthdays and etc. Other agencies. Other agencies are a hard niche, okay? Uh, but other agencies can be a really great niche depending on the services that you actually provide. But generally speaking, you need to be a successful agency only yourself to be able to provide any kind of service to another agency. So I wouldn't recommend it uh, unless you've already got a very successful case study in yourself, at which point you probably wouldn't be watching this video because you already know your niche. Non-profits. Non-profit businesses, it's hard, but they're really great to work with. Typically, non-profits get a lot of government. I worked with a non-profit that had massive government funding. They literally funded all of their ads, a 50 grand budget per month. Uh, great, hard to work with because they're looking for established agencies. Pest control, uh, I'm going to say avoid because you're going to be searching for this if you need it. Again, if you run Google ads though, like we'll put this in the easy category because if you're looking for, for pest control and cool, you're going to get it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's say, let's say avoid. Part of me wants to put this in easy. I kind of need something in between avoid and easy, like unsure. Um, this is an unsure one, pest control. I reckon people could do well with it uh, in the right area. Uh, I'd like to see someone try it out. Nail salons. Okay, now salons avoid too low ticket. It's not expensive enough. Okay, you yeah, had a lifetime value is there. Uh, actually, let me actually just figure. Bex, how much do you pay to get your nails done? 30 pounds. How often do you get it done? Every three weeks. Mm. And you always go back to the same place. Easy. 30 pounds a month. Why well, 30 pounds every three weeks. There's a lifetime value there. Not a bad one. Locksmiths. Okay, locksmiths, locksmiths, avoid. No, you're going to search for that if you want to find it. Uh, interior design, pretty hard, uh, but it's, it's medium. It's not hard, it's medium. Uh, it, it's more so on the on the getting a hold of these, these companies and also they're very like creative um, people. So they generally have got their marketing locked down anyway. Uh, and there's a lot of kind of word of mouth. So you'll find a lot of interior designers don't actually need your service, um, but then you find a needle in the haystack and it'll be great to work with. So I'm going to call it medium. Home security. Home security, let's call this a, uh, oh God, I'm going to call it an easy niche, okay? Everybody needs CCTV and some kind of a home security. So yeah, it's just going to be getting hold of those business owners, but I think it would work really well. well I know it works really well. I've seen it many times. Removal companies. Uh, avoid, unless you're running Google ads and then you're just trying to find them because people are just going to search when they need it. Uh, sports specialist shops. Hard, but absolutely incredible when you work with a sports specialist company. Any kind of specialist company for ads will just absolutely nail it. Uh, but again, these are generally going to be e-com. Photographers, uh, I'm actually going to say photographers avoid. Photographers, I've just seen to just... Many people have just tried to work with photographers over the years in our academy, and it just never really works in the way they want it to. Many of them are one-man bands. Uh, their pricing fluctuates from person to person, and also, like, they might want to be, like, a wedding photographer, and again, they're, they're limited by the hours that they have in the day, okay? So that's why I don't think photographers are great. Videographers, on the other hand, are a bit better, but I would call them medium, okay, because they're a high-ticket service. And there's also, normally, they're also more susceptible to actually branching out and scaling their businesses. Video editors... 
video editors uh, avoid uh, unless your service is nothing to do with lead gen yeah video editors are uh, it's going to be uh, video editing serve if it's a video editing service okay that you that this company provides i'm going to call it medium but you need to have a very direct offer to a very specific kind of a person okay phone repair pretty easy um yeah phone repair is pretty decent pool cleaners pretty easy hot tub installation medium but can be great we worked with one zoos avoid it's too low ticket there's no point um unless it's creative if you're doing creative work in your creative agency i can see that being a great niche and really fun to work with imagine working with a zoo and yeah it being a creative agency that would be wicked nutritionists great insurance this is going to be insurance is hard there are there are some ad rules around insurance you're going to want to check them out and look on look on the facebook library tattoo parlors is the fact that uh, they are normally very very busy and are normally booked up in advance so they are really great when you work with one that isn't too busy but then normally you can book them up very quickly and then they don't end up being great clients for a long time and so you have to kind of move around them uh, a little bit more and, and work with quite a few of them uh, and then you end up offering other services like content and so on to to to, to fulfill so i think tattoo parlors can be a really great niche but uh, the caveat is lots of them are already busy so it's it's a bit more tricky to pay event security slash security guards avoid um, cinemas avoid it's too low ticket florists if it's a high-end florist i'm gonna say yeah this would be good so i'm gonna call this i'm gonna call this medium only if it's high-end spas and wellness centers it's good um in fact i'm gonna call this an easy uh, i'm gonna call this medium one personal chefs great it's medium difficulty personal chefs are great uh, jet charter is going to be very difficult uh, i'm going to call this hard i am not going to say avoid because i think that there is something to be said about working with a very high-end jet charter company and uploading your own custom audience onto facebook of qualified people that you know can you can afford a big list of millionaires which isn't that hard to find uh, smacking them on there and running ads if you can nail this you'll build an incredible agency uh, same again for yacht charter i've seen people charter yachts on facebook ads um charter yachts uh, on Facebook ads but it's yeah it's pretty difficult jewelers great but difficult art galleries again great but difficult crypto and nfts very hard you're not going to be able to run uh, your conventional ads this is going to have to be a different marketing service hard but great if you work with a good product architects hard um, mm, it's 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 hard it's not a conventional lead gen service uh, and also you search for, I'm gonna say avoid I'm going to say avoid. And I say that as someone that studied architecture myself in uni. Like when you need an architect, you go and look for one. Okay. You look at the houses that you love. You look at the designs that you love. You look in magazines and online. So on. then drill down on a specific architect that you want to work with. Okay. So I'm going to say avoid. Okay. Uh, Self-storage. Self-storage. Medium. Furniture stores. Hard. Worked with multiple furniture stores. Brilliant return on investment. Hard to work with. Needs to be e-commerce can't be local brick and mortar hardware stores again hard has to be e-com pet stores hard massive return on investment uh, but needs to be e-com and veterinary clinics i'm gonna call this medium veterinary clinics is a great one um but yeah medium if you do end up working with one then run an offer to have a free health checkout for a pet and that's going to be an easy way to get people to switch vets from the existing one they're working with if they do then switch then there's great return on investment lifetime value uh, there for the client so that is 100 niches categorized in four tiers and as i said earlier guys like you want to make sure that when you're starting off you're starting with an easy or one of these medium niches if you're up for the challenge i would just be going for one of these easy niches if i were you though the most important thing when you're getting started is to get proof of concept for yourself what do i mean by that i mean you want to get a client sign them up know that the system actually works know that the business model actually works which you should already know because you've seen thousands of other people succeed but you never actually truly accept that until you've gone out there and done it yourself so you want to go out reach out to a niche have the path of least resistance and sign someone up get them some really great results you're then going to get confidence in your sales ability confidence in your ability to deliver them results and you're going to have a case study that you can use and leverage to go and sign up other people in that exact same niche okay and then you're going to start making money you can quit your job live life on the terms that you want to live them on then you're in a position where you have leverage over your decisions and you can decide okay am i happy 
working with plumbers right now. Okay, do I actually want a, an agency that works with plumbers forever? Maybe not. Okay, so maybe now I want to work with hair transplant clinics, for example. So now you can approach hair transplant clinics with a new level of confidence because you know you can sell, you know you can deliver a service, and so you ooze conviction. And conviction is what experienced business owners need to feel in order for them to trust you enough to work with you and sign up for your service, okay? Now I see niches and services like there's levels to this shit as an agency owner. You start off at the bottom, you unlock another level, you get another case study, you get some more confidence and then you move into something bigger and better and make more money, right? Sure, there'll be isolated scenarios where some guy went out there, started from scratch, launch an e-commerce agency or launch an online course agency and absolutely nailed it. That will not be you. Statistically, that will not be you. The majority of people that try and do that will fall flat on their ass. Trust me when I say that. Do not look at some isolated case studies, some isolated YouTube videos, some success story that is unrealistic and then have that expectation for what is going to happen for you, okay? You can go for these medium niches, but avoid the hard ones. Earn your stripes and then go for them later down the line when you've got conviction. Cool. That's it for me. Cheers.